All right, let's tackle this cranial nerve question. So a nurse is caring for a patient with a cranial nerve 10 deficit. Which of the following is the most important intervention to implement for this patient? So there are two ways that you can go about this question. Either you know cranial nerve 10 and its function, or you don't know cranial nerve 10 and its function, and typically it's the latter. However, I would recommend checking out this acronym. I have it posted in a different video, and also I have my cranial nerve face that really helps you understand the main functions of each cranial nerve, okay? So if you know the cranial nerve and its function, you can go through and answer this question. However, what if you do not know the cranial nerve? I really do not recommend guessing ever. I always tell my students, use knowledge first. However, if you just don't know cranial nerve and you can't remember it at all, what I recommend to my students is run through the answer choices and pick an answer choice that if you do not implement that, it can harm the patient. Now, there's no guarantee that that's going to be correct. However, you're trying to practice as safely as possible. So let's say I don't know the cranial nerve. Let's run through these option choices and how I would think if I didn't know this cranial nerve. Option A, stand in front of the patient when speaking to promote effective communication. Okay, if I don't do that, what's the worst thing that can happen? The patient doesn't understand me. That's not that bad. Option B, place the patient on fall precautions with two to one person assist to ambulate. Okay, if I don't implement that, what's the worst that can happen? The patient can fall. Option C, place the patient on aspiration precautions. Okay, if I don't do aspiration precautions, the patient can aspirate on food, develop aspiration pneumonia, that could be bad. So I keep option B and C open. Option D, patient may experience third speech, so allow the patient time to speak and provide a whiteboard for writing. So if the worst thing that I do is just rush them and don't listen to them and don't give them enough time to talk, then I won't understand them, okay? So I can eliminate A and D if I don't know the cranial nerve. Now, I literally cannot stress this enough. Just because you've narrowed it down to two doesn't mean that one of those is right. However, this is a good way to tackle these questions. So if I'm in between option B and C, 50% chance, pick one, move on on the NCLEX, forget about it. If you're doing practice questions, take the time to do content review and refresh your memory on cranial nerves. Now, cranial nerve 10, I'm gonna give you the answer here. This is the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve is in control of swallowing. So option C is going to be your answer. Option B is going to be a defect in cranial nerve 8, which is vestibular cochlear nerve. That's the nerve of your ears. They help control balance, okay? Option A is referring to cranial nerve 6, abducens, and option D is referring to cranial nerve 10, hypoglossal. Okay, in hypoglossal, it's the motor function of the tongue, and you'll have a deviated tongue. I hope you learned some strategies to tackle these questions. Follow for more.